<clears throat> Hello, everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series, we're going to be beginning a new short story in our new short story format, a more interactive way of reading. Uh, this one will be from a... Let's see if I can get the story on screen. This one will be from a, an author you probably haven't heard of, uh, an Australian writer. Um, give me just a second here. Well, I'll tell you about the story in a second. We're only going to read the very first section, and I'm going to give you a way to read it that I think will help you get more out of the story, especially for the purposes of learning English. Well, that's a little bit about the story, about the class. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom nice and quiet. Tune in to the new words you're learning when you are speaking. Use them actively so that I can correct you. And finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. And that's all you need to know about me. What I'm going to do right now is give you a link to the material. Give me just a second here. So you're going to see short story. One second. You'll see it in just a moment here. Okay, there you go. That should work. See if you can open that. Oh, it's not working. Hold on a second. Give you a better link. That one doesn't look like it's working. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll tell you what, hang on just a second. I'm going to give you a better link. Try this link. That one should work. And if you don't see it, give me a second, and I'm going to put it in the internal chat, too. Okay. Can everyone open that? Is it working? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right, very good, very good. Okay, and what I'm going to do is quickly download this, because I've just been putting together this document five minutes before class. I had a little trouble with the text. There's going to be some mistakes in the text because I had to manually type it. The PDF I had didn't work very well. So I'm a little bit late. Give me a second. I'm going to download this and share my screen with you. And then we're going to start by looking at the, the image that you'll see uh, on the very first page. And I'll, we'll use that to start thinking about the themes of the text. Okay, where is my text? Give me a second here. Uh, where did I put it? I just downloaded it and it disappeared. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank you. I'm, my name is Marco. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Marco. Hello. I was going to be sure you could hear me. I'm just busy trying to get my document open for everyone. Give me just a second. All right. I think I got it. And there you go. Oh, that's a little bit small. I'll make it bigger. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, yeah, it's a little too big. Okay, you can see it more or less on screen. Okay, so here we go. First of all, Marco, where are you from? Italy, right? Yes, I'm from Bologna. From Bologna, okay, <coughs> nice to have you. This is the second you, time we have lessons. Yes, I, I, have, I, I remember your name, but I don't remember your picture. You must have had a different picture before. 
Maybe I. <laughs> I don't. I don't recognize you. In fact, anyway, it doesn't matter. Marco, you're yeah. here with Daniel, Shadow, and Sylvia, and probably Yuki will be joining us in a little bit. Just okay. so you know. What I want you to do for this story is I want you to think about the themes before we read it. So on your screen or also on page one, you'll notice this kind of a, a wheel looking thing. And if you go down, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. They've got your table of contents. I've only put part one of the story. You'll see secrets, that's the title. I've put part one and I'm going to put part two later today after the class. But you see that, that there's three tasks, tasks A, B, and C. So we're going to do tasks A and B before we read to get us prepared for the kind of story we're going to read and to think about the themes. And we'll do task C after we read. And every time I give you a task or an exercise, the idea is that it's something that you could do on your own when you're reading in English, a language which is not your native language. So it's to get you to think about how to approach difficult material. All right, so it's meant to be a strategy for you in the future. So I don't have any useful information there. I'll update that later. So it says warm up task A. Um, Daniel, want to read task A for us and tell us what we got to do? Put a cross on each line in the circle at an appropriate point to show how you felt as a child. The scale goes from zero, not at all, six, very much. Join the crosses with a pencil line. Well, Compar you're going to have to print it out if you want to actually draw on it, but you get the idea. You have to match one part of the circle to the other. Sorry, keep going, Daniel. Compare your pattern, pattern with your neighbors and talk about it. Is there anyone near to you with a similar pattern? Talk about similarities or difference wait, wait, in your simil circuit. Similarities. Similarities. Talk Clarity. about similarities. Yeah, I'll update that later. So it says talk about A. Yeah, just I'll mute her. Go ahead. Go ahead, talk Daniel. About talk about similarities or difference in your childhood childhood memories. <clears throat> that's right. All right, so that scale that you're going to be doing your matching with on task A is on the very first page, so I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you can see it on your screen. All right. I have to print it out if yeah. you want to Actually, Hello. Uh, let me see. Who is this? Apparently, she's having some technical problems. <laughs> so, first of all, let me say welcome back to Ali. And I saw Yuki out there as well. I don't know where you are, Yuki. And let's say hello to. I don't know how to say your name. Is it Abasoba? Is that right? Abasoba? You're going to have to close all the windows except the hangout. Abasoba? Hello, Abasoba? Well, let's see if we can get her microphone. Let's see if we can get her system to work here. So, don't don't mute her, anyone. Abbas Abbasova, are you there? All right. Well, I'm going to write a message to her. Maybe she'll see this. I don't know what's going on over there. So, give me just a second, then we'll get started, everyone. Hang on, just a second. I'm going to write her a message and just tell her what to do. Abbasova, please. Close all the windows except the hangout. Okay, so Abba, so take a look at the message I'm writing you. After you do that, 
you can turn on your microphone. So Abbasova, I wrote a message to you in the chat window. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, everyone else. So that was our task. You can see this a little bit bigger. I can't make it too much bigger on the screen, unfortunately. Uh, it's a little bit difficult with the PDF that I'm using. I'll make it just a bit bigger. But you're going to think about your own childhood in order to do this. Okay? So take a minute. You don't have to print this out and draw a line, but you should match. So it says put a cross on each line in the circle at an appropriate point to show how you felt as a child. The scale goes from z zero to six. I didn't create this task, so I'm not sure what it means, zero to six. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're making a cross, I believe you are matching one side to the other. Does anyone want to give it a try? So we can see what we're, we can see that, um, for example, on the far right side, it says my parents and I did a lot of things together. And on the far left, I felt excluded from the world of adults. So I guess we're not actually drawing a line between the two, but you've got an extreme, right? On one end, you've got a, a, a close connection to the parents. On the other end, you feel excluded. And depending on where you mark that line, it'll give you a scale, it'll give you a rating. Because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you've actually got ten little marks on that line. And wherever you put your, your mark, for example, if I put a mark here, let's say I put a little X here on the screen. Hopefully you can see that. So that little X gives me a rating of... Uh, Five, six, seven. Seven out of ten. So maybe if I were going to do this, I would say, well, I mostly felt excluded from the world of adults. I mostly felt excluded. So in my childhood, I spent a lot of time imagining things, <laughs> living in a world of make-believe. Uh, I was very interested in the world around me, but, um, but I... I definitely was not kept, uh, there were a lot of family secrets. I was not really told what was going on, uh, anything like that. So I definitely felt excluded. So what I'd like you to do is pick one or more of those little crosses with, the, with one end of the scale to the other. Figure out where you'd put your X, count the number of marks, and it'll give you a rating. So for mine, I've got a 7 out of 10 leaning towards I felt excluded from the world of adults. Daniel, what about you? Uh, three. Which Not one are you three. picking? The same or a different one? Uh, different one. Oh, which one? Uh, the three mark. Okay, but read it. Which one are you talking about? I, I did the one that... that oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I felt excluded from the world of adults. Oh, you're doing the same one as me. Ah, uh, I have to pick one. Yeah, whatever one, whichever one you think talks uh, about your childhood, okay. whichever one you want. Okay. I felt close to my mother. Five. I felt close to my mother. <laughs> Where was that? I felt close. Okay, so you're right. You're right in the middle. Is that right? Yes. Or are you? Cause so let me see if I get this right. I'm going to put a little initial, if I if I understood correctly. So five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five would be here, Daniel. Did I get that right? Yes. Ah, okay. So I'm going to put a little J for John Eric and a D for Daniel. So that means between I felt close to my mother and the opposite, I liked being by myself in special places of my own. That means you're closer to like being by yourself. Did I get that right? No, it, I felt close to my mother. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your number? Because uh, you said 5. 5 would be here. 
mm, more close. Or do you mean here? What if I move it there? Yeah, I. Okay. Oh, that that's a ten. Ten. Be yeah, because look, if I look at the scale from both extremes, and I start counting from I like being by myself, that's one. If I put the one here, and I put the two here, and I put the three here, and the four here, see what I'm doing? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means you are at ten here. You see how we're numbering this, Daniel? Yes. So in one extreme, I felt close to my mother. On the other extreme, I like being by myself. I'm looking at it like these are two sides of a scale. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but that's that's how I'm looking at it. I know the directions say 1 to 6, but I don't quite understand how they're numbering it. So I'm going to go from 1 to 10 here. Is that a common thing in your country? Is that a Spanish thing? Being, uh, is that I don't know. It, I send in the war. It, yeah, I don't know. Children are close. To his mother's. Children his are father. close to, to. Oh, wait a second. Are you saying to your mother or to your parents? Mother, mother. In, in my case, my mother. In your case, your mother. Yes. Okay, very good. Very good. Oh. And Sylvia, what would you pick out of this scale? See if you can pick. It can be the same or it can be a different one. Uh, I was always curious to know things, and it's a nine. A nine. So I'm going to put a little S for Sylvia here. Can you give us an example? What do you remember that showed your curiosity? Oh, I was all in the garden and I was like a, a boy, a little boy. <laughs> it was terrible. So what were you doing? Out there looking for um, bugs? Play, <laughs> no, no, no. Play with the animals. Okay, I'm living in the countryside. And so it's green everywhere with a lot of animals. And yeah, I spent all day outside of my house and play and try to discover stuff. I did too, actually. I didn't live in the country, but I spent a lot of time outside of the house. I remember, I remember when I was about seven years old. I, I was out and it got dark and it got darker and it got darker and I was still out and I couldn't understand why why my parents weren't looking for me and then I realized it's because they didn't love me <laughs> no I'm just kidding I just was amazed that I was allowed to stay out and um, I didn't question it and then um, because usually when I was younger I guess maybe that was the age where it was okay to be out after dark but anyway, I was outside a lot too. Uh, Yuki, where do you fit on this scale? Uh, I'm. I resemble to uh, Sylvia. I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, probably I'm at uh, at 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 the end of the scale of curiosity. So I was. I, I am. I'm always. I think I'm always curious to know things. Uh, what, that's what why I came here in to Russia, to Russia, to Russia. But you didn't go to Russia when you were a child. No. Uh, <laughs> what, what, I came what about here. when you were a child? What did you do? Ah, uh, it is. Uh, it it's is, more about uh, childhood because we're we're going to get into the theme of the story, which, like Charles, the last story is a childhood story, but it's from a different perspective this time. Uh, since so, I was a child, I was I was I was quite a curious child. Uh, I was quite curious, so I think uh, yes, I'm at the scale, at the end of this scale. Okay, very good. And Shadow, what about you? Remember, we've got lots of choices here, so you can pick another one if you like, or if there's one in particular uh, that we use that fits you, tell us about your experience. Yes. Um. Okay, I'm. I think I often did things that now seems to me to be true. <laughs> really? But I didn't know that really. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know it before. Jeez, like what? 
like cruel to people, or did you no, like kill animals? What did you do? Uh, no, not kill animals. <laughs> oh, with your no. bare teeth, you would like rip animals apart and drink their blood. What would you do, Shadow? Uh, I really I was not a child. I when I get angry, uh, I I don't know how to explain that, but I was always angry with my brother. So I. Uh, we say temper, <laughs> temper, tantrum. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Tantrum. Whoops, spelled it wrong. One second. Temper tantrum. A temper tantrum is something that kids do, right? They get angry. They don't know how to handle their emotions, so they have a temper tantrum. That means they go too far. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I was crying a lot. <laughs> something like that. So, did you have a lot of brothers and sisters? Do you have a big family? It's a big. It's three brothers. Two three sisters. brothers. Three brothers and two sisters. Mhm. Mm six six kids. Yeah. Oh my God! Are you the youngest or oldest, or in the middle? Um, there is a youngest girl. Um. You're the youngest. Girl. No, no. Oh, 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 there's a younger sister. Okay. Mhm. Mm so you're 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 second to last. Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, what about you? Uh, so we've got here. We've got Ali and we've got Marco. Marco, what would you say? Um, I think uh, which best uh, fits me. Well, I would pick up the the number two from the the right side. I was often left alone. I was often left alone. Where is that? On the right side. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So number two is over here. I'm going to put a little M for Marco. For Marco. You were often left alone. That sounds terrible, Marco. Yes, but it was, um, it was due to the fact that both of my parents had to, to leave for work uh, in the morning. Uh, right, and, right. Um, Yes, I used to spend uh, most of my time with my grand grandmother, parents. grandparents, my grand grandparents. Yes, um, and how was that? Anyway, I spent most of my childhood with my my grandparents. Even if yes, it seems curious, but I felt really close to my to my father, even if. Uh, uh, he didn't use to to cuddle me or to to hug me a lot because he, he was really uh, really cold or uh, well, not so easy going. Yes, and speaking of his temperament. Right, right, right. Well. Love and relationships are strange things. <laughs> it doesn't. I think it, mm, it doesn't matter um, how much time you 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 can spend with someone else. It depends on maybe on the quality of the time even. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, and and also, you know, when you're close to someone, it's not. Uh, it's not what you say or what you do. It's something else, something that is not really about the words sometimes. So, uh, yeah, I understand. Very interesting. Good point, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if we can get everyone to contribute here. So, we'll go to Ali and then uh, Abbasova as well. If your microphone's working, we'll get your opinion, too. Ali, what would you fit on the scale? Yeah, I think that I choose uh, two. Um, the first thing I felt, uh, I felt that that exclude from the world like of adult because which, I have. Which yeah, one? Sorry, which one? I felt exclude from the world like of adult. Ah, okay, and that's a number, number, a number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that eight, eight or seven. Okay, so you're next to me. Like there. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. I felt that quite a bit. And what do you remember about that? Why did you feel that way? Because I have two sisters. Uh, they, um, 
uh, all those and me, mm-hmm. uh, and they are uh, twins, so um, they um, uh, they close to each other, and um, I think that um, my uh, my dad uh, always uh, he was a uh, working. And um, yeah, it's my my hope, uh, not my hope, not uh, it's, uh, my um, uh, to be uh, to has a, a little brother, but it cannot be. So I feel that I uh, I doing my um, all stuff by myself. So you said you had two older sisters, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they were very close to each other. Uh, so you, they, you... they are twins. And oh, they're they twins. Are, okay. They, uh, they are very close to each other, and they older by five years. Uh, so they doing. Uh, they are doing. Uh, they was. They were doing uh, stuff uh, by each other, but uh, my, from myself, I doing. Uh, in something by myself, by my right. Yeah. So you were kind of excluded because you, well, they're twins, so obviously they're very yeah. close. Okay, yeah. I got it. Interesting. Everyone's got a story. <laughs> and what about you, Abasova? Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes. Can you hear Hi. me? Hi. Am I saying your name right? Is it Abasova? Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Very good. Very good. And where are you from, Abasova? I'm from Kazakhstan, from Almaty. Do you know? From, from Kazakhstan? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Very good, very good. Nice to have you. So, what we're doing here, we're going to read a short story, but we're first getting into the theme of the short story by talking about a childhood. And this follows from the last story we read, which was also a story about childhood. But the last story, Charles, by a different author, was about... Um, maybe more about from the point of view of the parents. This one is maybe more from the point of view of the kid in the story. So that's why we're doing this exercise, just so you know what we're doing. Yeah. What about you? Where would you fit on this scale, Abbasova? Um, I should... Uh, uh, I felt close to my mother. I felt close to my mother. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so you're up here, maybe. I can put you here, A, B. Okay. You're up there somewhere with Daniel. Okay. But, and why do you say that? What do you remember? Did you uh, spend a lot of time with her? Because um, I think that my mother is the most pleasant person in the world for me. Uh, she always encouraged encourage me for um, for new startings. She always um, believes on me. So she encur- encouraged you to do new things and find things out? Yes. Yes, very good, very good. It's funny because I felt that way more with my, my grandmother. I felt very close to my grandmother, who was from a very, very different time. <laughs> she, she was she was very, very old, from a very different era, and uh, and yet... I felt that she was a very understanding person. It's very mm-hmm. interesting. Um, okay, let's let's hold on to some of these ideas as we as we read the story. I'm going to move forward just a little bit here. Uh, yeah. Okay. There's one more thing we ought to do before we read. Look at this. Here is a summary. Forget about that little tape cassette because I don't have the recording. Here's a summary of the beginning of secrets. That's the title of the story. A story about a girl called Kylie. As you listen to the beginning of the story, fill in the missing details. Okay, well, we can't listen to the beginning of the story, but what we can do is make an educated guess. So this is going to be a summary. I don't know how successful this is, but you're going to make an educated guess or maybe not even an educated guess, maybe a wild guess. Um, but then we're going to come back to this as we read the story and see if we're right. So uh, we're going to sort of randomly fill in the missing words here. Okay? So I want someone to fill in a word 
based on what you think you know about childhood, what you think you know about Australia, <laughs> whatever seems appropriate. Kylie lives in Australia. She and her mother have moved to a new house with someone. Fill in the word. Let's see if we get it right or wrong. Peter. <laughs> with Peter. Who's Peter? His mother's friend. <laughs> ah. Her mother's friend or her mother's boyfriend? Mm, maybe both. Oh, oh, it says her mother's friend. I'm sorry. I see what you're doing here. Okay. With with Peter? That's very particular. I don't know. Okay, okay. Peter. <laughs> her mother's friend. <laughs> Kyle misses... Kylie misses her... blank. Sylvia, give us a word here. What do you think Kylie misses? Her... <laughs> Koala. Her koala? <laughs> Australia. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to question that. Koala. So that means that Peter is a replacement for her koala. Okay, got it. She's exploring the blank and finds an egg. Yuki, what's she exploring? What do you think? Uh, she's explore, exploring the... Uh, Supper, food. The suit? The, uh, the foot. The foot? <laughs> foot and, at the and bottom find of the, And find the egg. Uh, she her foot? Like uh, her hands and feet? Her that no, kind no, of food. 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 Oh, I thought you said foot. I'm sorry. She's exploring the food. The food? Uh, ah. The food? The food? The Wait a second. She it sounds a little weird because you say the, the garden. The garden. I heard the garden. Do you like that? Ah. Could be the garden because you're using an article, so ah. we would we would expect it to be a place. I agree. The garden because of an article. I agree in that case because of the the, and she finds an egg. Nobody else knows about the nice blank. Egg. Marco, what kind of egg is it? The nice what egg? It's going to be some nice. kind of a description, I imagine. What? The nice hen egg. The nice hen egg? Hen like this? H-E-N? H-E-N. H -E -N. Okay. Could be. It could, could it be possible? It, yeah, yeah, it could be. Hens maybe, maybe. S. No, no, not with an S. Because okay, okay. it's a little hard to explain the grammar here, but no in this problem, case, no we don't need it. Okay, a hen is a female chicken, so yeah, it could work. She feels happy because now she has a... Ali, what does she have? What do you think? She found a, an egg, so she feels happy because now she has a what? Educated guess, mm -hmm. Ali. What do you think? Fill in a word. She has um. A chicken. <laughs> she has a chicken. <laughs> she has a chicken of her own. <laughs> Finally, she has a chicken. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling as we read the story, we're gonna change some of these answers. I have a funny feeling, particularly about Peter. I don't know about Peter, but we'll find out. Okay. It says, check your answers. Okay, but we're going to come back to this. Let's start by reading the story. And let's see how this story, um, how similar or different it is from some of your answers in the very beginning. All right? Well, Carmen is not here. I don't know whatever happened to Carmen, Yuki. But in <laughs> Carmen's absence... Yuki, you're going to start us off. Why me? <laughs> because Carmen isn't here. Uh. <laughs> if, you, if you weren't here, it would have to be Daniel. And if Daniel wasn't here, I guess it would have to be, I'm not sure. It's a toss-up between Shadow and Sylvia. And the rest of you are newer, so... We'll call All responsibility or to Carmen. Maybe. Yes, I don't know. What happened with Carmen, Yuki? Okay, okay start us off. Uh, secrets, part one.
one of the bank of of the new house between the picket fence and sheet of tin. Kylie found an egg. Her mother and Philip were inside. She heard them arguing and wishing she she still lived with her father. The yard was was long and extinct. Ex excitingly. Excitingly. Ex excitingly littered with four fallen grape vines, a shed length of timber and wire, and twitching shadow from big trees. It was a new house, but it was new to her. Wait, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a new house. Ah, sorry. It wasn't a new house, but, but it was new to her. She had been exploring the yard. Oh. Ah. Daniel. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Almost you are right. Uh, the egg was white and warm, warm looking in the nest Also, of, of dirt. Of dirt. It's a typo. It should be separated. A nest of dirt. Ah, okay. That. The egg was white and warm looking in its nest of, of, of dirt and down. Yeah. Reaching in, she picked it up and found that it was warm. She looked back at the house. No one was watching. Something rose in her chest. Knew she, now? Now, now she knew what it was to have a secret. Ah, so... We could almost go back to our answers now and see if we could change a few things. What would you change from this from these first answers here? Philip. <laughs> Peter Peter it's becomes a, Philip. Philip. You were very close. Yes. You were very close though. Peter becomes <laughs> Philip. It's a common noun, no, Peter. Huh? With with Peter, yeah, a very common name, of course. Nice nice Catholic name. Does she miss her koala? That that one. What do you think? Could be true. Her father. Her father. Oh. <laughs> that's a that's a little different. Ooh, someone's got to turn off the microphone. Ali, too loud. Too loud. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was too loud, Ali. Uh, <laughs> She's exploring the garden. Well, that's actually right. The yard. No, but it's the same thing. Uh, in some, oh, okay. some in, in Britain they they'll call it the yeah. garden. In American English, we'll call it a yard, and in Australia, apparently they call it the yard as well. So, garden is actually the right answer, just in British English. She finds an egg. No one else knows about the nice. What kind of egg? Hen egg. White. White egg. The nice white egg. She feels happy because now she has a chicken. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> Secret. Secret. There we go. We got all of that, and we've only read one paragraph. Um, Sylvia, is this the kind of thing that you would do when you were out in your in your yard? Yeah, is this almost. something that? Yeah. We haven't. Almost. Turned, but. No, okay. When I was really little, I had all some uh, hen, hens. Hens. Yeah. So this could have been a story about about Sylvia as well. <laughs> Sylvia found an egg. Her mother and Philip. Did your mother have a friend named Philip? No. No. Okay. So it can't be about you. Uh, you can. You know what I, I can. Sorry. Go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. I would uh, find a uh, egg. Uh, I would like to cook. It. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's in part two of the story. <laughs> in part two of the story, she she makes <laughs> she makes an omelet, and she becomes a famous pastry I'm chef. Hungry. Yeah. Every time. All time. Well, that's the difference between Kylie and you, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yuki, can you t do you know what a yes. picket fence is? You were reading that first line. Do you know what a picket fence is? 
picket fence. Have you heard of that before? Uh, maybe it's a fence made of line. Well, what do you mean by lines? I think you're on the right the right idea. But sticks, maybe. Sticks. Yeah, yes. that's right. That's right. And in fact, made of sticks. Made made of a row row of sticks. Yeah. yeah? And in fact, let's look at a picket fence real quick, because we have a whole connotation of life in a picket fence house. There's your picket fence. Can everyone see it? No, I uh, yes. now I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I I don't maybe this not obvious if you're not in America or someplace like that. But what comes to mind? What what what, what kind of house? What kind of life? What kind of family lives in a in a behind a white picket fence? What do you think? I think. Uh, uh, Go ahead, you can. Sorry. Can I uh, I think he uh, it, it's a family of quite um, normal family, um, quite uh, average? average level of, of fa family, average mm -hmm. average family. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it is in America. There is uh, there is a garden with green green. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Green row. Uh, green, green grass. Green lawn. Lawn. Absolutely. Lawn. W uh, A L W N. Lawn. Yeah. Yeah. So it comes to mind a kind of average house. Where are they? They're not in the city, obviously. Yes. I think we, they are living uh, abroad. Ah uh, no 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 they are, they are li <laughs> living not a pro they are living uh, uh, mm, uh, near the city near the city in the suburbs in the suburbs sorry <laughs> yeah I agree when you think of a white picket house you think of the suburbs like a kind of a rich affluent suburb outside of a major city and that could be true I I'm pretty sure this is going to take place in Australia just because the author is Australian. So it's probably not in America, but that's just because I, I just know the nationality of the author. But I don't know. I this is this is also a new author for me. I, he's very very famous, but it's not. I don't really know his work that well. All right. So let's go around the room. Next on my list is Sylvia. We're each going to do a paragraph. This is really short. It's only about a page. So we're each going to do a paragraph and then get to task number three at the very end. Sylvia, maybe you okay. could take the next two short ones. They're quite short. At dinner, her mother and Philip spoke quietly to one another and drank from the boats she had all the load to look at. Oh, that's her a mistake. Mother, oh, she drank bottle? from the... Bottle? Maybe bottle? Yeah, 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 it's bottle. Yeah, sorry. Mistake. Because I had to write this by hand. So I oh. couldn't... I didn't have a text. So yes, I think it's bottle. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. She was all the load to look at. Her mother was a tall woman with short hair like a boy. One of her front teeth had gone brown, and it made Kali wonder, wonder what? <laughs> okay. Wonder. She it made Kylie wonder. Period. Okay. She knew <laughs> that Philip was Mom's new husband. Only they weren't married. He smelled of cigarette and mustache hairs. Hairs. Kylie thought hairs. Uh, Kylie thought his feet were the shape of pasties. Pasties. What are? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not. For me, pasties means something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a typo. Because mm -hmm. if I put, if I look it up in Wikipedia or on Google, it it it's something that it's kind of pornographic. So <laughs> it doesn't. It does. It, it must. It must not mean what I think it means. It maybe it's pastries because I'm sorry I had to type this quickly and uh, I, it might have been a typo in the original text it's not clear so or it's an Australian word okay. so I'm gonna go with pastries because I don't I don't no, know not pasties. Pasties. I don't know I'm not sure when pasties, I have is, if pasties is something you would expect 
to see like a stripper wear. I mean, it's like it's not. It cannot be right. But listen, Sylvia, what's your impression of Philip so far? Mm, he's not a good uh, husband. Eh, maybe not. Look a lot, man. And, and what makes you think that? Mm -hmm. What makes you think so? Uh, I think that he he's not kind with her. Us? He's not the perfect father. Okay, he's not he, uh, her father, but... It's not a father, right? No. Okay. Okay, keep going. This the next. It's really short, so one more. When everything on her plate was gone, Kelly left the table. Because the lounge room was a, a tangle of box and crates, inside one of the which was the TV, she went straight to the, her new room. She thought about the eggs as she lay in the bed. She was thinking about it when she fell asleep. When she fell asleep? When she fell asleep. And what do you think she's thinking about? About the egg? She okay. Maybe she wanna. How do you call the little chicken? Uh, the chicks. 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 Yeah, maybe she she's wondering to if inside the egg there is one of these. Hmm. So there's a line a little bit earlier about uh, the lounge was a tangle. It should say tangle, not tangle. The lounge was a tangle of boxes and crates. And why do you think that? Why do you think it's a tangle? A tangle is like if you don't comb your hair, the, your hair gets tangled. Mm. Why do you think the lounge was a tangle of boxes and crates? What, what clue does that give you about what's going on? Uh, I don't know. Class, what do you think? Help her out. Uh, it was full. It's a, it's a mess. Maybe. Uh, okay. It was full. Yeah, absolutely. It's full of stuff. And Daniel, you're saying it was a mess? Okay. Yeah, I agree. If it's a tangle, it seems like it's not organized well. And why do you think it was full and why do you think it was a mess? What does that tell you about what's happening in, in their they lives? They just moved. They, they just, just moved, moved to the house. Them. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is like probably a moment of upheaval for the girl, upheaval, a moment when everything has changed, and we already get this clue that she misses her, her father, right? And she's with this this strange guy, Philip. Upheaval. I'm gonna try to write upheaval for you in the chat window. Upheaval means everything is not settled. It's up in the air. It's unfinished. It's uncomfortable. Uh, that's the feeling that I get. This guy, Philip, makes me uncomfortable. He smells of cigarettes and, <laughs> and mustache hairs. I don't know what that means. Uh, but it sounds like he's a bit rough. To be trusted. What's that? He's not some, someone to be trusted, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like he's got, he's, he's got a secret of his own, right? He's, something isn't quite right. Um, he's hi he's hiding behind his mustache, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, Marco, why don't you continue? Yes. Um, as we start off from next day. That's right. right. Yeah. Next day, Kylie got up onto the fence and crept all around it, looking into the neighbors' yards. The people behind had a little tin shed and wild up round against the fence, in which hands and the puff chested little rooster pecked and picked and sprattled. So she thought, balanced over the splintery gray fence, that's where the egg comes from. She climbed down and checked behind the sheet of tin and found the egg safe but cold. Safe but cold? Hmm. What does that mean? Safe but cold. Safe but cold. Before it was warm. warm. Now, it's, now it's cold. Maybe it's mm, no longer edible. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know if she wants to eat the egg. <laughs> Sylvia was <laughs> saying that she's probably thinking about the chick inside the egg. But now it's cold. To me, that means that the egg was abandoned. Maybe the egg was abandoned by the mother, the hen. Oh, what? Abandoned. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, like oh. this in the chat window. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Abandoned. That means the, the maybe the mother left it alone, and now it's cold. So maybe she's worried at this point. Um, we'll find out. Shadow, why don't you continue here? We're all going to try to get everyone to read at least one paragraph. Go ahead, Shadow. Okay. Later she climbed on the big trees in the yard, right up um, from where she could observe the hens and the rooster next door. They were fat, white birds with big red combs, and right and bright eyes. They clucked and preened and ruffled. Ruff? Ruffled, ruffled. That ruffled. means like make their feathers big, like ruffle your feathers. Ruffled and Kaylee, I can't see. Kay. And Kaylee grew to like um, grew to like them. She was angry where the pipled pipled. Rooster beat them down to the ground and jumped on their backs, picking and twisting their necks. All his colors were angry colors. He looked mean. Piebald is is a uh, is like a pattern. Uh, I don't know if I can. It's like a spotted pattern. I, I it's not a really a good. If I go to Google Images, there's nothing really. But it's like speckled. Um, here, here's a picture. I'll show you quickly. Uh, maybe this is a good example. Uh, yeah, this is it. This is it. Here. Uh, one second. Oh! One thing I hate about Google Hangouts is that the little buttons disappear when you try to click on them. Can you see this thing here? This bird? Mm -hmm. So this is a piebald penguin. You can see the, the mm -hmm. kind of spotted pattern. So that's how she's describing the, the way the hen looks, or the way the rooster, whatever it was. So it's kind of like a spotted, speckled pattern. Uh, let me get my story back on screen. So she was, uh, she was angry where the piebald rooster beat him down. So the rooster is mean. That's the male. Um, Abasova, why don't you continue here? By the way, the underlined words were there were some mistakes when I was writing, so I underlined sort of where I wasn't sure about a word. So don't worry about what it means. It's just for my own to correct later. Go ahead, Avisova. Avisova, are you there? Going once, going twice. Who's next? <laughs> I think we're back to Daniel. Uh, okay. Oh, she's there. Okay, go for it. Uh -huh. Go for it. Uh, inside the house, Mom and Philip laughed and shouted and reminded her that Dad didn't live with them anymore. It was good to have a secret from them. Good to be the owner of something precious. Philip laughed at the things she said. The mother only listened to her with a smile that said, "You don't know a single true thing." Hmm. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you uh, think about this line? Um, her mother li only listened to her with a smile that said, you don't know a true thing. Um, uh, she came into the house and... It's not, it's not that she came into the house. Uh -huh. It's that... It's that when she was in the house, instead of being on, ah, on yes, her yes, own. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Philip and mom reminded them, uh, her mm -hmm. that that um, didn't live with them and she couldn't um, 
and she realized that it was good that it, they don't know your secret, maybe. Yeah, that's true. She, she, she's keeping the secret for a reason. Yes. And what do you think the connection is with her father not being there? Uh, for me, there's a connection. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think there's any connection between the first line that inside the house, Mom and Philip laughed or shouted and reminded her that Dad didn't live with them anymore, and in the end, she's she's got this new secret. Do you think there's a connection between those two things? Oh, yes. Uh, I um I think that the connection uh, between Mom, Philip, and the girl right. is, uh, is not so good. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the relationship is not so yeah. good. Exactly. And so what does the secret probably do for her? Why does, she, why does she need the secret? What does it do for her psychologically? Uh, In your opinion, of course. There's no right or wrong. In mind, uh, she is she uh, wants uh, to keep the secret from them. She didn't want to uh, keep on touch with them, maybe because she thinks that Mom and Philip uh, not so close to her. And yeah, absolutely. So the secret is like something of her own. Like yes. they, they took away her father, but she has this egg. <laughs> yes. So and it's like it's like something of her own, maybe. She's not so close to them. Or she doesn't feel close because first of all, Philip is disgusting. He's got a big disgusting mustache. Yes. Ooh. He smells like cigarettes. Mama's tooth turned brown. That's probably because she, you know Dad left. Who knows? But she's got she's got this egg. Uh, who's next on the list? Daniel, did you read? I don't think you did. No, I don't read. Go for it. I haven't read. Sometime. Oh wait, wait. Oh, geez, we only have one minute. Hold on a second. Okay. Do we have time? Uh, I can't. If I if I if you read, I'm gonna get kicked out of the class. Listen, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to finish the part one on your own. Um, and there's a little task for you to do which you can try for homework because th these, this is a very short story so I'm going to ask you to do this part one on your own and um, I'll see if you can read the whole story on your own I'll see if not we're going to continue reading in the next class on Tuesday but in the meantime um, you'll see that there's a summary of the first, start of the, uh, first part of the story that I began and that you should try to finish on your own and we'll compare answers in the next class. Um, I've got to stop now or I won't be able to start the next class on time. I apologize for rushing. I will send this to you uh, in, the, in the chat window for homework and I'll be back in just a minute to start the business class. We've got a nice big happy speaking activity to do with all of our vocabulary in 30 seconds. So stick around for that. Bye for now everyone. Talk to you soon. <laughs>